Welcome to the Riding Inspire Rockcast, the podcast for mindful mountain bikers. I'm Roxy. I'm a full-time mountain bike coach, mental trainer, and I'm a passionate believer that mountain biking is as much about the mind and the brain as it is about the bike and the trail or the physical skills. In case you hear me breathing and in case you're new here and don't know, I'll take you on my creativity walks. That's why it's called a Rockcast. So in this podcast, we talk about the real stuff behind riding. That is fear, confidence, coordination, mindset, and also the science of learning as an adult. So this is no ego, no fluff. It's just honest conversations and practical tools to help you ride with more flow, with more control and more joy. So whether you're new to mountain biking or coming back after a break, this is your place to grow both on and off the bike. So let's get going. Today, we're looking at why perfectionism happens, what happens in the brain and the body during a perfectionist moment, what you can do to break that cycle, and I'll give you long-term mental strategies to deal with perfectionism. So here's something you need to know about me. I'm actually one of the most perfectionist people I know, and I don't really say that with pride. Because while perfectionism is really often something people call high standards or discipline, and it looks like that from the outside, in reality, it's one of the biggest things that has actually stopped me from progressing, both on the bike and in real life. I actually remember one specific practice session. It was a few years ago, and I was practicing a simple cornering drill I was already a coach back then, and this was not a fancy drill, it was just regular cornering drills. And I just, that day, I just couldn't get it perfect. So every time I didn't hit the perfect line, or every time my body position felt just a teensy little bit off, I would just stop in the middle of the corner and restart. And after like 10 minutes or so, I was completely tense, I was really frustrated, and basically I was fighting with myself. So at some point, I actually caught myself thinking, no, I actually caught myself saying out loud, come on, you teach this, so you should be able to do this. I don't know, maybe that sounds familiar. And that's precisely when I realized that my biggest barrier isn't really the skill itself, it's actually my brain and the way I treat myself in these situations. So. Why does perfectionism actually happen? Well, what's really going on behind perfectionism is not really about being ambitious. Perfectionism is very often a protection mechanism. It's about wanting to feel safe because, you know, if I do everything perfectly, then nothing can go wrong, right? That thought, it gives us a sense of control when we feel uncertain or vulnerable. But the thing is, life doesn't work that way. Nothing will ever be 100% controllable. So having that thought and thinking that we can control everything, that itself is going to cause problems down the road. Secondly, as adults, we have a very strong self-image of competence. So we're used to being good at things. You know, our children look up to us and we're adults. We have it all figured out at work, at home, in life. So when we start something, especially when we start something as an adult, like for example, mountain biking, mistakes honestly feel threatening. We interpret every little mistake as failure and we forget that it's an essential part of learning. Thirdly, there's comparison. For example, on social media or on Strava or even on group rides, we constantly see what others are doing and we tend to compare our weaknesses with other people's strengths. So our brain often says, I should be there by now. That should is actually one of the most toxic words in learning. And then finally, if we look at the final reason for comparison, yeah, no, sorry, for perfectionism, is our brain's reward system. Perfectionists, I researched about this a lot because I read about so many research papers that is super interesting. Nowadays, you can find a lot that we chase dopamine. 
that quick hit of I did it right. And we have linked our dopamine reward system to progress. So every day when progress is slow or not there, we don't have that dopamine. So we can't get high on our own supplies and that's when we get frustrated. So we push even harder, trying to earn that perfect moment, which ironically makes us even stiffer and even more anxious. So the chances of it happening and us getting that dopamine hit actually decrease even further. So what happens in the body when we have this perfectionist moment? When we slip into that mode, our body joins the drama of our brain. So our sympathetic nervous system, that's our fight and flight nervous system, it kicks in, our breathing becomes shallow, our muscles tense up, and the flow, which is that natural coordination we need for smooth, smooth movement, it just completely disappears. So mentally, our focus narrows, and we focus on everything that's wrong, and we stop noticing what's actually working. Emotionally, then frustration sets in, which is usually followed by self-doubt or even avoidance. Like, maybe I'm just not made for this, or I just never get good at this. These are the kind of self-talk loops that are actually caused by avoidance because if we don't even try, we can't get it wrong, right? And that's precisely when learning stagnates. We enter a negative feedback loop. That tension causes mistakes, that causes more tension, and that causes more mistakes, and maybe you've been there and maybe this sounds familiar. So, what can you actually do in the moment when you feel that perfectionist storm rising? Well, I wanna give you a quick reset tip that you can use on your next ride or on your next practice session. Step one is stop, reset, and focus. So the moment you catch yourself getting frustrated, do this, stop. You can either, in your mind, visualize a huge stop sign or a big buzzer that you actually hit, or imagine anything that allows you to really stop that mental negative loop and then take one deep breath. There is a specific type of breathing called the physiological sigh, and this is how it goes. You, Breathe in through your nose, and then immediately take another breath through your nose, like a really short one, and then you breathe out through your mouth really long, ideally to a count of six or eight. What this does is it activates your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest nervous system. You cannot think yourself calm, but you can breathe yourself calm because your breath is your direct bridge to your nervous system. So you do this physiological sigh, ideally three times, and then you say to yourself, I'm training my nervous system, not the result. Here's a big tip, write this down so that you have this on a little piece of paper. Next time that perfectionist moment comes, you can look onto this little post-it note and it'll say stop, reset, focus, and stop is stop sign, then the breath, and then the reset, which is I'm training my nervous system here, I'm not training the perfect result, and then the next step is set just one focus point. For example, light hands, or modulate the brake, or whatever you're focusing on that moment, it has to be one specific focus point to get our brain away from the negativity, to have that flashlight pointing to the direction you want it to go or you want it to walk towards. And then you let go of the rest. The second tool I wanna to give you is that you remember moderate learning depends on errors. Mistakes are not an undesired side effect. They are a necessity to learn. Your brain literally needs small deviations to trigger neuroplasticity. That's the rewiring process that actually builds skill. If you keep doing what you're good at, you will never learn new things. You'll just repeating the things you're already good at. So you need to make mistakes to learn new things. So every little wobble or every mistiming or whatever your error in that moment is, is data 
for your nervous system. That precisely is learning in action. And the next tip is celebrate mistakes. I mean it, this is the hardest one for us perfectionists, but actually, as I just said, mistakes are not an undesired side effect, they are a necessity to learn. So every time you commit a mistake and you punish yourself, that's when you're actually taking the possibility away to grow. But every time you notice a mistake and you start to celebrate it, like for example, by laughing, literally saying a nice try or whatever, something that makes you laugh, at, laugh out loud, that's when you literally biohack your progress. That's when you turn that cortisol, the stress hormone into positive hormones. You leverage the possibility of learning from that mistake. Because laughter, for example, releases dopamine instead of cortisol, the stress hormone, and that's what keeps your brain open to learning. Also, this is something that really helped me is journaling mini wins. So after your practice session, write down one thing that you did better today. And you really, sometimes you need to go looking for those things, but I promise you, if you start journaling, and that's why in my online courses, you will get a little success diary to journal these things and to actively influence the way you think, the way you feel and what you focus on because that rewires your brain to start looking for progress versus looking for failure, which we perfectionists often do. So here are some long-term mental strategies. And if you wanna work on this more deeply, then you can check the link below. I have a mental training course that you can work with. The first long-term strategy is redefine your goal. So not I want to do it perfectly, but I want to notice what happens. Just noticing an error is actually the biggest invitation to growth. And once we start to notice that as perfectionists, that's when we start embracing failure more and stop fearing the failure. Next, practice acceptance. You know, imperfection is the condition for growth. Just like muscle growth only happens through micro tears during practice. You know, you want it to hurt. You have, you have to have that struggle. And the same actually happens with other practice. You need to struggle, you need to fail to learn. And then daily mental hygiene. For example, just practice specific grounding breathing exercises just once a day. Even if it's just three breaths once a day, I guarantee you it will help your nervous system reset more quickly. The next tip is use a supportive community. When you join my remote courses, we have an app where Roxy Bike community can also share their frustrations, share their progress, and that's when you really start to notice it's normal. Struggle is part of the game. Seeing that others struggle too, sharing your struggles and having a supportive community can really help you reset your nervous system and also see your struggles in a different light because it really is part of the progress and part of the process. Trusting that process versus only trusting and relying on progress that really is the game changer for progress. Trust the process, not the progress. That's what I just meant. And the last step, and this is a big one, is self-compassion. Talk to yourself like you talk to a kid or to a student or to a friend. You know, sometimes we get so mean towards ourselves, and just shifting that perspective and saying, am I really talking to myself like I talk to a friend? Or am I maybe being really mean? Just starting to think like that can be a huge shift. So here's my challenge for you. If you think you're, an, you're a perfectionist, then on your next practice sessions, do something imperfect on purpose. Just a tiny little mistake on purpose and laugh about it. It sounds really, I'd say, weird <laughs> or unnecessary, but I guarantee if you start your practice session with a deliberate mistake and laugh about yourself, that's how you start to train your brain to see failure is not the end of the world. It's actually 
a necessity to learn. It's a part of progress. And that's when you hopefully start trusting the process because perfectionism, it doesn't make you a better writer, but dealing with mistakes in a constructive way. Yes, that will make you a better writer. If you'd like to follow my proven structure, then see below, you'll find a link to my free track sound course and my other courses. That's all I've got for you today. I hope you like this episode. Rate this podcast if it helps you and share it with someone who may be a little hard on themselves because they're a perfectionist like I am. <laughs> so long, goodbye. <laughs>